I have to go. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? God damn it. What do you want? I have to go. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? God damn it. What do you want? I have to go. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? God damn it. What do you want? I have to go. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? Okay. We are live on YouTube for the first time ever. We've never really done a stream on YouTube. So how is everyone doing today? So sorry, I'm late. I'm uh, like I said, I've never really done a stream on never really done a stream on YouTube. So <laughs> I'm kind of figuring it out as it goes. But I think uh, we're live. Can anyone on the chat confirm that you can see my face at least? <laughs> Hopefully you can see my face. Uh, can anyone, anyone, I think it's really delayed. Oh yeah, there you go. We are actually here, 100% accurate intro, yes. So, hello everyone. I am so happy to, to get back to you all, guys. Um, we haven't done a stream in like two months and a half, almost three months. I am so sorry that I've kind of disappeared and vanished for everyone's life. But uh, I had a lot of issues, as you know, like I was kicked out of my house. I had to like do a move. I had to move houses. I had to find the house and... Of course, because of my pets, I, I couldn't really find a house. It was so difficult to find a house in London, especially now with lockdowns and everything. But I found it. I have a new office, as you can see. I'm, uh, I actually have a brand new office, which I even have a multicam thing going now, as you can see. Um, I'll show you the office a bit later. I'm actually thinking of doing um, a preview of the office, uh, probably in a video, you know, maybe a tour or something like that. But yeah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, but um, but I put, I set up two cameras because I think for today we probably have to to do two cameras. But uh, thank you so much for all the kind words. Um, I can see that a lot of people are quite excited that we have uh, that we're back. Now I want to reiterate: we're actually not back. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not going to return to uh, weekly streaming until I finish my online course. So obviously, my online course is now the priority, you know, after all my personal problems this year and all the problems I had over the over the last year, uh, I'm really behind on trying to finish the online course. I'm like 25% left to finish. So that's my first, uh, you know, my my real priority on everything. Um, so I won't cam come back to Twitch or to YouTube Live, I think, until December, until I finish the course. You know, once I finish the course and I deliver all the old recordings and all the new classes that I promised to, to all my uh, students, <clears throat> you know, once I finish that, I will continue uh, to do streams every week. And we'll see if it works here. You know, I maybe I'll do it on YouTube. I, I like YouTube. It looks like it could work. I definitely have a lot of people watching. Um, although I, I think people are watching because of the giveaway. <laughs> so... <clears throat> But yeah, my, my office is much wider, yes, it is. So Claudio, I have space, a lot of space. And this is actually a, f a 35 mil on that lens. So as you can see, if the 35 mil, I'm quite far away from it. I'm not gonna show the whole office today because I haven't finished setting up my entire office. And to be honest, like I, on that side, you just have boxes. And on that side, you just have boxes. I'm still unpacking. And so I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed of showing you that side and also this side. So I'm not going to show you what's behind here and I'm not going to show you what's on that side. But I'll show you what's pretty. But as you can see, you have all, I have all my video games here, but I don't have my consoles. I haven't set up any, any consoles whatsoever uh, because, like I said, I'm waiting um, until I finish my course. I'm really focusing on my students and... And if any of my students are online right now, I again, I will just take the opportunity to apologize to every one uh, of my students for the entire for the huge delay that I've been having on the on the street on finishing the course. But um, you all know why it happened, and I can only apologize. But um, I will be better. I promise that. Uh, hi, Celine. I can see a lot of friendly faces here. 
Um, so I'm going to add Selena as a moderator as well. Um, and I can see that Mishu was here somewhere. So hi, Mishu. Hi, I hope, hope, hope you're well, man. I haven't seen you in ages. Um, okay, so uh, first order of business, really, um, is to talk about the... Um, the giveaway, you know, like we have a giveaway, as you know, um, you know, BenQ was so kind to sponsor this stream today. This is the anniversary, the fifth anniversary of Hugo's Desk. It is literally the five years we've been doing this. The anniversary obviously was in, in uh, you know, it was in, in August, but <laughs> I, I couldn't really do the stream because I was packing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, BenQ was so kind to offer a free monitor for me to give away today to one of the lucky... Um, viewers here. So the only thing you need to do to sign up to this, um, it will be only during the two hours of the stream, um, is to basically just sign up. So you either have to, there are three things you need to do. You need to follow Hugo's Desk on Twitch, not subscribe, just follow. It's free to follow, by the way. It's completely free to follow. So you just have to follow Hugo's Desk on Twitch. You just have to follow Hugo Seager on Twitter and then just visit my Patreon page. No payments, nothing you will be forced to do. I just want some more followers that's the only thing i want and um, so i'm putting up the link here so please go ahead and link up and hook up for the entries obviously there is 194 people watching zero people have have um have signed up so um oh no no i think it's because i can't see the entries i think that's why um I might have to do this on another screen, you know. Um, as you guys know, this is always a garbage truck on fire. Uh, so never forget that. Um, this is how I kind of feel sometimes when I'm trying to do certain things. So give me just a second because I'm just checking if the, if the giveaway is actually working. <laughs> so uh, just give me one second. Um, I think it is. Um, I, I do believe it is. But um, let's see here. Can anyone confirm that they actually managed to do an entry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see 160, 171 people here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I definitely think it works. <laughs> so, um, cool. <laughs> I was just double checking because I couldn't see any entries here. So, I think... Oh, I know why. I know why. Uh, this obviously wouldn't be a, a stream without a problem. <laughs> so, um, that's what happens here with Hugo's Desk. It's always the same thing. Um, anyway, I think this is not solved. Let's see here. So, yes, it is. Okay, cool. So now it's solved. As you can see, now there is actually entries in. So there's 195 people. Of course, obviously, keep in mind that the more people that sign up, the less chance you have to win it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. But again, as I was saying, before I start my presentation, <clears throat> I really want to apologize to all my students for all the delays. You all know that I had a lot of personal problems and a lot of issues during the last year trying to sort all of them out. I think they're all now all sorted. So um, I, I am recording the classes as we speak, and they're all going to be finished very soon. I'm, I've been recording like nuts since this studio has been on. So uh, but anyway, um, thank you. Oh, I, I did. I f oh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, OK, so anyway, um, the, I can see the stream is super delayed. Um, I think it's super delayed. Why is it so delayed? Oh my god, it's like... Oh, here we go. I was on the wrong image. Sorry about that, guys. It wasn't delayed. It was just... Is it delayed? Maybe maybe it is. I don't think it's delayed, no. I can see it's synced. Yeah, yeah. you guys have to be a bit, um, a bit patient with me because this obviously is the first time I'm doing it on YouTube. So I've done it on Twitch. I've nailed Twitch but not nailed YouTube. <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, so don't forget to enter the, the, the giveaway. So without further ado, today I really want to talk about color calibration. This is why we're here, and this is why also um, this is, you know, as you guys know, I've been an ambassador for BenQ for a while, and I really want to um, talk a lot about this. So I'm going to just get on with it, with this show. So um, um, hold your horses, because this is going to be a wild ride. So welcome, everyone, to this stream. Um, so today, to celebrate the fifth anniversary, which, by the way, we are going to have cake, and we are going to have... Um, not only cake, but we are also going to have champagne. Although, I'm going to be the only one drinking the, the, the champagne and eating the cake. 
<laughs> but um, but today we are celebrating the fifth anniversary of Hugo's Desk, and with that, I am doing the most requested video I've ever done uh, in YouTube. Every single week, someone asks me if I can do a video about screen calibration. So here it is, okay? So this is screen calibration for compositors, editors, and visual effects artists. This is a do-it-yourself studio guide. Uh, this is with the support of BenQ. Thank you so much, BenQ, for supporting my stream. I can see that there's two of, the me, two of me here. <laughs> I can see myself up here. Um, so without the support of BenQ, this wouldn't have happened. And as you can see on the poster there, uh, BenQ has, has given away a BenQ SW240, which is a professional 10-bit photography monitor. So this is really exciting. So I hope you guys are excited as well. Uh, anyway, let's start. You know, I think most of you know me, but there's 200 people watching. So if you don't know me, my name is Hugo Guerra, and I'm a director and visual effects supervisor. Um, I basically split my time between directing and supervising these days. Uh, I'm from Portugal. I'll do real, this really quick. I'm from Portugal. I was born in Porto. Um, I currently live in London. Uh, I've been living in London for 12 years. I've worked while in London. While in London, I have worked for the BBC, for Nexus Jellyfish. I was at the mill for a long time as the head of compositing at the mill and VFX supervisor. I was then a cinematic director for Fire Without Smoke, and I was a VFX supervisor for PlayStation, Sony, in San Diego, uh, and also the San Diego Studios. And currently, I am a director uh, for Rebellion. I'm a freelance director working for Rebellion. I'm working in something at Rebellion, but I will not tell any of you what it is. <laughs> You'll see it next year. Uh, I split my time between being on set and working in visual effects, uh, scratching my, fa my head, and always doing uh, really awkward things on set with spheres and shit like that. This was many years ago. That's why I look so. Um, that's why I look so young. <laughs> I look young and and still fresh out of boot. You know. <clears throat> anyway, I've worked with a lot of different brands. I've worked with Mythbusters, PT Tips, Grolsch, TNT. You can see the screen. You don't need me to recite the names. I've worked with all these brands and all these people. Uh, I've done a lot of directing as well as a game cinematic director, both for in-game cinematics and also for uh, trailers as well. So these are all some of the games that I've worked on. Uh, last one was The last one that I can talk about was Vermintide 2. Uh, obviously, I can't talk about the two others that I did. As I say, I want to thank BenQ. I've been an ambassador for them for five, for four years now. And they've been so supportive of Hugo's Desk. They've supported the channel. They've supported the streams. They've helped my Patreons. They've helped a lot of people. So I can't thank you guys enough. It's a shame we can't meet in person. As you can see here, we always met every year in FMX. And we've met in a lot of different places and different festivals all over the world. But unfortunately, we don't do that anymore because now everything is online. Just like you guys are watching now, an online section. Um, so anyway... Thank you so much. And if you guys want to check out my work, just go to hugo-gerre.com. Just go there and do that. I can see that there's 222 people watching. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, there's also five dislikes. So thank you so much for all the people that dislike this stream already, even without watching it. <laughs> so I already had the five dislikes even before I started. So it comes from a place of hate, I am pretty sure. Anyway, big question today is why should you calibrate your monitor. And before, I, I forgot about one thing. Yeah, there we go. I don't have my notes, so I want to see that. Um, so this is the big question we have for today. Why should you uh, calibrate my monitor? Why should you calibrate your monitor? Uh, now, keep in mind that this is only going to take half an hour or so. It's going to be a quite short stream uh, in terms of this keynote. And keep in mind that, that this topic is so huge that it would take hours and hours and days and days. It would take an entire course just to get into it. So obviously, I am not going to talk about everything. I'm going to miss a lot of things, I'm sure. I'm doing this live, so I'm sure I'll miss a lot of things. I'm sure I'll say things that are wrong. Keep in mind that this is live. You know, It's difficult to do things live, so keep that in mind. And I will try my best to talk about everything. And then, of course, you guys can ask as many questions as you want as well. Um, and... Again, I, I, I feel like this is a topic that is so deep that this is like a starter kit, okay? So imagine that this is a starting point. You basically use this as your starting point to then move on to knowing more about light and more about calibration and more about all of that, okay? So it's only a starting point. Anyway, 
you've been her, you've been uh, you, you you've been told, you know, like don't expect you after this stream to know everything about calibration. That is not going to happen. Okay, it's going to happen is that you're going to basically know a few things, and then hopefully, if I did my job correctly, you will develop an interest on going and researching this more. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that all of you actually go into this and actually research for yourself. And I have a lot of books and links that I will share at the end. And then we can kind of like move on and, and all of you can learn more about this. But anyway, why should I calibrate my monitor? So first thing I would say is that, you know, <laughs> this is a, a quote from a book from Alexey Van um, uh, Orkman, uh, a really nice book, which I will talk in the end, at the end, which is a color correction book. Uh, but for me, I think that, you know, before you can cook, you need a kitchen, right? And a lot of times people mistake that to be a vi good visual effects artist um by the way people asking on the on the chat where's my pepsi i don't have a pepsi yet <laughs> i will don't worry i will uh, but a lot of people think that to do good visual effects it's all about having a good machine and obviously i'm just making a joke by showing these crazy machines here but it's further from the truth than you ever imagine. You know, I've seen artists making amazing work. You know, some of their best work, uh, you know, done on on um, on like a really crappy computer on a really old computer. So, computers is 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 a good uh, tool. You know, and especially computers with a lot of graphic cards and a lot of power. But to be honest, we are doing content creation, right? We are doing footage and we are doing film and we're doing design and we are doing Photoshop. So actually, you know, and, and obviously for me personally, monitors are the most important thing on our work, not just a computer. Monitors are the most important. Oh no, obviously I, I am blame, I blame myself for this as well. You know, I have a Mac Pro, you know, I also have a fancy computer just like these people had. Uh, but I feel like, like people really neglect the fact that monitors are so important and crucial for our work. And they, sometimes I feel they don't invest enough on this thing, you know. Anyway, um, now a lot of people also think that for them to do color or to do calibration or to do color correction, they need to have a fancy suite here. And, and it's really further from the truth as well. Although this helps and it's amazing, especially now with lockdown, we, we can't really do this. You know, it's never going to happen. You, you don't need this yet. You know, especially if you're doing low, 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 uh, you know, low budget productions. And if you're doing like simple productions, you don't really need something as fancy as this. So for me, like, this is my new setup, uh, by the way. So I will do a video, a tour, a, a studio tour for my my new studio. But for me personally, I I just need two monitors, and then I need like you know a, a, like a, a crappy monitor just to check stuff. So for me personally, I am using you know an SW three twenty one C from BenQ. Then I have an SW three twenty. I'll talk about why I have both. Um, you know. They are both photography monitors because I, I do a lot of mixed media, so I need to like have a lot of different things. Then I have a really crappy Black Magic reference monitor. It's really crappy, and it's meant to be crappy. I'll explain why in a minute. Then I have some hardware scopes to do color correction. I have, of course, um, some lighting as well. And of course, when I'm doing color correction, I'm, I really dim the room a lot, you know. And we are we are going to talk about that in a second as well. But the most important thing is to consider. You know, because a lot of people ask me, oh, why, why can't I have my screens calibrated? Why don't they match? And, and you need to understand that the more screens you have, the less they will match, okay? I really want to emphasize that the problem with a lot of screens is that when you have a lot of them, they tend to have a lot of carl problems. And that's not the only thing. The, only, the other problem is clients. You know, clients have no idea about color calibration. They have no idea about color management. So they tend to see the work on a crappy laptop or on a crappy iMac or sometimes on a phone, as you all know. And this is a, you know, we already have the problem of a lot of monitors. Then we have the second problem of clients not giving a crap. And then we have the other problem, which is the world. You know, we have like now a connected world because of COVID-19. Everyone is working everywhere. And at some point, it really breaks because then someone is with a crappy monitor somewhere and then someone else has a good monitor and then someone else has a medium monitor and then it's a mess. And with all of this, with all of this, it's even worse, especially with a multi-facility workflow, it's even worse. And then it becomes even worse because you now, because you're home, you have to be your own IT manager. So now you are the one that, you know, there's no one to help you. 
And you are the only one that can help yourself, which means you have to know so much more, just like this friend here. Uh, you basically trash the computer himself. So you don't have an IT manager. You don't have color correction. You don't have color management. You, but you still are supposed to do the work, you know? So it's a problem. It becomes a huge problem. Now, I really want to emphasize, and I need for you to all understand that this is why when I started, I, I did a big disclaimer. I did a disclaimer that everyone that works on this industry knows for a fact that the match, the screens will never match because they never do. No matter how much you do and no much how much work you put into them, even if you buy the same monitor, they won't match, okay? And this is a reality you have to live with. <clears throat> That's the thing, you know. Uh, thank you so much, Kartika, for saying that my, my channel is the best channel much appreciated. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, I'm really sorry, guys. I am miss. I, I am kind of neglecting the chat right now because I can't look at the chat while I'm talking. But uh, please keep in mind that if you have a question, put the question on the chat. You know, it's it's. You can put the question on the chat, and then uh, I have moderators on the chat, and they can put the questions so that I can read them later. Okay, there will be a moment that I will go through questions. You know, so you can post the questions on the chat, and if I miss your question, just post it again. You know, we will have a Q and A. Um, at some point, don't worry, uh, it will happen. Um, oh, sorry, uh, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> That's the button. Uh, sorry, I'm still kind of sorting this out. Um, so you need to understand that no screen will ever match. And, and here's an example. These are my two screens. You know, I have an SW321C on the left and an SW320 on the right side. And obviously, they're not the same machine. They're not the same screen. No, they're not. But they're very close. Supposedly, they are. The SW321 is the evolution of 320. And notice what happens if I put Marcy here with the cap. You know, this is basically Rec 709 with factory. Uh, calibration. So basically, you go to the monitor menu and you select Rex M09. You know that's so that's the factory calibration. And as you can see, they both don't match. So here's the problem: like, which one is right? Which one is the correct one? And the issue now that you have is because they both came with the calibration document that said that they were both calibrated, and they both say that they were good. But which one is? Is it? Now here's the problem, and that's why. You need to calibrate your monitors. You can't trust anything, you know. And especially you need to work as a team because communication is crucial between all your artists and communication is crucial between the client, especially. You need to talk with the client about what the expectations are of what you're delivering, what the expectation is, is of what color space you're trying to work on, you know. Uh, <laughs> Bless you, Lee says, right one looks good. <laughs> yeah, the right one does look good, which makes sense because the right one is a 10-bit display, and the left one is an 8-bit display plus FC FCR. So it does make sense, but although both of them are not correct, by the way. So we'll get into that in a second. Um, so work as a team, and, and the more you realize that they will never match, the more this will be easy for you, okay? The faster you realize that every screen will be different, the better you will start to feel. That's how I feel, at least. And so if you just look in here, for example, these are factory calibrated um, monitor displays with color, color from factory. As you can see, we have a DCI P3 on the edge. We have then the sRGB, then we have the Rec 2020. They all look completely different. And then we, of course, have an animation of what the hell it is, which no one really knows what that is. And this is the common problem. A lot of people have settings on their monitors that are not correct, and a lot of times they make their own settings and they're not really checking them with a meter. And, and obviously, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people on the audience here already knows this. And so keep in mind that I have no idea what you know. I have no idea what you don't know. So uh, be patient that sometimes, you know, I might be saying something that you already know. But there's a lot of people on the audience that doesn't know this, you know, and, and that's why we're discussing this, you know. And I'm saying this because there's already another 10 dislikes, so I'm sure people are maybe frustrated that they are hearing things that are very simple for them. But always keep in mind that certain, certain things that are simple for you, they're not simple for other people, okay? So that's the thing. Like, you need to kind of understand that everyone is in different, um, you know is in different places on their careers and different qualities of their work as well. And, and so hopefully 
for some of you on the audience, this is beneficial. I hope so. Um, I hope at least that. Um, so let's continue. So, um, so always keep in mind that never trust anyone. And that's really what I think you should always keep in mind when you're talking about color and especially not trust the monitors and not trust really what you are trying to look into. Uh, so the second thing that I would want to convey today is you really need to understand the delivery standards. And this is where things really get dicey and complicated because at the moment we have the typical delivery formats, which, you know, we have Rex 09, which is one of the oldest formats from the 90s, you know, like it's been around for ages, which is for HD and for video and television. It basically has a color temperature of 6,500 6, Kelvin. And then we have like the range of Rex 09, which literally just takes on this amount of color and light inside. Now, if you look at sRGB, it's very similar to Rex 09, but it's not quite the same. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, then we have DCI-P3. So Rex 9 is for video, HD, and delivery. And you'll you'll see the importance of this later on. Uh, and then we have DCI-P3, which is what we deliver for the cinema. As you can see, it has a huge range of color, uh, much bigger than Rex 9 So it, it, it ac ac accomplishes much more color fidelity. Um, and uh, before we even talk about ACES, um, don't get confused about color spaces and ACES, you know, because ACES is just a way of managing these color spaces. ACES has nothing to do with this, really. Like, you still need to deliver in REC, and you still need to deliver the CIP3, you still need to deliver REC in 2020. These are the deliveries, you know, that we are uh, looking into. Um, ACES is a way for you to make sure that all these deliveries are delivered correctly and you have intermediate color spaces to work with those deliveries, okay? Now, um, if you think about the quality of what you're delivering from, you know, visible color spectrum and coverage of your, of your light, you can think, you know, that... You know, roughly, this is, of course, you know, from um, Steve Winters from the AV Forums. It's a graphic that he's made. Um, so Rex 709 uh, accounts for about 35% of visible, visible spectrum. Uh, DCI-P3, which is the cinema standards, you know, equivalents to about 45.5%. And then Rec 2020 is about 75%. So you're starting to get like almost 100% now, which is really, you know, like very impressive for the Rex in 2020. Obviously, if you look into ACES, they are even bigger, you know, like ACES APO, it's like the whole thing. It's 100%. It has every range of color. And when you look at ACES IP1, then it's a bit less color. And then, of course, versus, um, you know, versus uh, Rex 09, you have even less. And then, of course, as you start going into other cameras, they all have different curves and they all have different color spaces. So th this, is, this is a big, big, problem of course because not only we have the deliveries but then we have the intermediates and, and <laughs> are you confused yet <laughs> because this is this is confusing stuff you know this it is confusing and and for the geniuses on this on the chat you know i'm i'm sure people on the chat know all of this but it's not as simple as it seems you know it really it really isn't and i i think i think it's easy for you to get lost on on all the on, on all the information, and I absolutely agree agree with uh, with um, Hood Herber Rec. Aces is the way to go. Everyone should be using Aces. There is no other way. Um, so, um, <laughs> okay. So let's move on to the next thing that I would like to ask. So, um, what about what about what monitor should I get? So this is also pretty dicey because. Not only we have the problems of color spaces, now we have the problems of monitors. So currently there's really only two types of monitors in the world uh, that you can use. There is no correct answer really, to be honest. It depends on your budget. But the, the most comp the, you know the, the most uh, typical monitor that you would see right now is, a, is an LCD, an RGB LCD, by the way, because there are two types of LCDs. And then of course you have an OLED and then you have the plasma, which is a I'm only putting the plasma here because it's still visible on certain suites in certain companies, but obviously the plasma is obsolete. It's not been fabricated since 2016. So, uh, you know, like like plasmas are not really the way to go at all. I just put them here so that we see the, the differences, you know. 
So in terms of RGB LCD, which is the most like the one that is most used and in, in widely in the industry, you know, um, it doesn't really have good blacks. That's the problem. You know, it is getting better every year, but but it, the blacks levels are pretty bad uh, sometimes compared to an OLED at least. But it's very accurate in terms of colors, and it's widely used in both 10-bit or 8-bit FCR. Now, keep in mind that if you have a glossy LCD, then you need to be on a very dark environment. And then also there's two flavors of LCDs. You have the CCFL white LCD and the RGB LED. Um, you know, sorry, uh, LCD. Um, so RGB LED, of course, um, you know, is... It has a wider range, like 100% P3, but more expensive, you know. Um, and RGB LED requires a warm-up of at least half an hour before you even start working, and you need to kind of recalibrate every six months. Now, the white LEDs don't need warm-up, but they can only cover 75% of P3. We'll talk about that in a second, but and of course, I can answer all the questions you guys have there. Again, LCD has the problem the contrast ratio is only 1,500 to 1 compared to an OLED. So OLEDs has much better blacks. It has much better color reproduction. It has almost, you know, it literally looks like a window. I don't know if you tried it, but because it can physically turn off pixels to recreate proper blacks. It does, it, it does require a warm-up, of course. Um, and it has a contrast ratio of like a million uh, or more. So... You know, it, it is obviously the correct answer is to get an LED, but not everyone has the money to buy an LED. LEDs are extremely expensive. That's the problem. Like we're talking about spending like at least 7,000 pounds to 20,000 pounds to 30,000 pounds. So obviously for the, the, the balance between spending money on your equipment and working from home, the LCD or the LED would always be the best choice, you know, for, for you. Because it's too expensive to get an OLED, only if you're really, really rich you can get an OLED. But there's also a debate for me, at least personally. I think OLEDs look too good, <laughs> and they look so, 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 so good that no one will ever see what you just watched on the OLED. And I think that is one of the issues that we have with OLED. Then obviously plasmas are still around on color suites and flame suites. They're obsolete since 2016. They have very good blacks. They need, a, again, warm-up as well, just like the LCDs, but the darks are a bit noisy as well. But anyway, one quick tip I would tell you, everyone, is that always check your work on a consumer TV as well, just to make sure it, it looks good. Because that is the problem with all of these screens, you know, the 10-bit screens and the OLEDs and the plasmas. They are all so, so good in terms of high quality that sometimes you forget that, you know, Basically, John Joe, uh, you know, uh, John Doe and and Jane Doe, they're watching TV with a regular TV. Most likely, the TV is not even calibrated; it's not even controlled. So, you should always have something on your 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 portfolio. Like even if you have the TV on the kitchen or something, at least go there. Don't use such an old TV, by the way. That's a CRT. That's I'm just making a joke, really. Um, you don't need to make it so old. <laughs> but um, but um. Is everyone still with me? I hope you guys are all with me. I can still see 300 people here. I'm assuming, I know that a lot of you are still here just because of the giveaway. I know that. But hopefully someone is learning something with this. You guys are learning something with this? I know, I know for the fact that this topic is incredibly complicated and this topic is really not possible to go into in like half an hour, 45 minutes. This is the kind of topic that requires you to really research and really go from it, you know. So I hope you guys are, are all happy with everything we've watched so far. I can see a lot of yeses on the screen. That's good. That's good. Anyway, so Portugal is here. Ah, thank you so much for Portugal. Ah, people are learning. That's good. Uh, what giveaway? <laughs> Someone is saying what giveaway. <laughs> I like that. So for those of you that don't know, there is a giveaway. There is a giveaway of a real, of a free monitor. So uh, SW240 by BenQ is going to be given away for free for one of you. Um, I'll just put like on the chat so that you can... Uh... <laughs> Uh, so you can have a look at it. Um, but yeah, today it's all about like you guys, um, you guys learning something and maybe picking that up and actually working with that and actually researching more because I keep emphasizing this. This is a very complicated topic and it will not be solved just by watching this video. You have to watch a lot of videos for this to work. Okay, I just wanted to make sure uh, we know that. Um, anyway, 
uh, before we continue, I'm going to do a break because it's been 45 minutes since we st- 45 minutes since we started. Need to stretch my legs, and I really would recommend you all to do the same as well. So let's do a quick break. Um, you guys already know how this works. So we're going to do a break about between five to 10 minutes, most likely 10 minutes, and I'll be back. Go and stretch your legs. Uh, you know, drink something, get some water. I'll be back in about five minutes. Um, I know the the sign says 10 minutes, but I'll be back in five minutes, okay? I'll, I'll see you very soon, and go and don't forget to stretch your legs and get some blood flowing on those legs, okay? Um, I'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. <laughs> I love one of the comments here. <laughs> Who said it? I, I thought it was amazing um, that it said, Hugo's superpower was... Oh, here we go. Mika Hale said, Hugo's superpower to make 300 people stretch legs and drink water. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. That is uh, so amazing. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, so, guys, um, this guys and girls, th look at this. Like, there is already uh, 593 entries for this thing. So, um, I keep saying this: the more people enter this, the less chance you have to win. But um, I'm joking. I'm just kidding. But um, look at that. There's like almost 600 entries. This is insane, which means, if that's correct, I probably have a lot more Twitch uh, followers now. Let's have a look. <laughs> Let's have a look. Just out of curiosity, I'm just, like, checking now. Um, nothing like having a good giveaway to sort this out. Huh? I wanted to... Uh, look, at that, look at that. I arrived on three... Wait, sorry, I need to, like... Ah, I don't want to have this sound. No, 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 stop. won't fail us. Stop, stop, stop. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. There you go. I don't want any of that. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, I already have 310 followers. That's okay. Thank you so much. I've already reached 3,000 uh, followers as well. Um, yeah, if you guys want to check out uh, First Crimson, he's actually doing uh, some unreal work there as well on Twitch. So go and follow him as well. He's always a very nice uh, streamer as well. Uh, but yeah, anyway, like, um, thank you so much for, um, you know, thank you so much for um, being here. And let's just get on with this thing. Um, so uh, why, um, you know, why don't my screens match? That would be the first thing that we would say, uh, you know. Um, that's, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit, where am I now? There you go. Um, I was on the wrong screen, so that's the, the correct screen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so, that's the next question we're going to go for. Uh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, everyone, I have my, my Diet Coke here. Look at that. That is awesome. Look at that. It's all here. It's my... You guys know it as Diet Coke. I used to drink Pepsi, but uh, my wife bought Coke, so now I have to drink Coke. <laughs> anyway, let's just get on with this thing. Okay, so why don't my screens match? And I would really, and again, here, the thing, like I keep saying from the beginning, Never consider that they, they will never match, you know, as much as you try, unless you really, really buy really expensive screens, you know. But you can work as best as you can to make them match, you know. And so one place you could start is by looking at Flanders Scientific. So Flanders Scientific not only makes really good monitors, but they also have a huge, an awesome YouTube channel, you know. And obviously uh, they have a lot of scientific videos that go through, you know, how to actually calibrate and i'm going to just take the, just going to take the sound out of this they have a lot of videos about how to match screens how the limitations of matching screens what kind of gear can be used for a screen matching so you can actually watch some of their technical videos they also have a, an awesome website that really goes through everything you need to know about it so maybe have a look at their website they have some really nice videos um, about this and also, um, you know, the other thing you have to consider as well is that this is why it's such a problem if you have multiple screens on your setup. And I guess my advice to everyone here would be to at least have one calibrated monitor on their setup. I don't want you to have two because this is the problem you're going to encounter. As you can see here from this, this is basically a photo from Pro Video Coalition. This is like um, a, a NAB show uh, slideshow. And as you can see, the uh, spectral power distribution, which is basically how color spectrum is distributed between these monitors, is completely different. As you can see from the RGB LED and the RGB OLED and then the phosphorus LED, completely different types of, you know, of, of way of, of actually showing color. And so 
and especially between the OLED and if you have an RGB OLED and then you have a white OLED. So not only you have a problem between uh, uh, LEDs, but then you have a problem between LEDs and OLEDs, and then you have a problem between OLEDs and OLEDs whites and LEDs RGBs. So they all never, never match. And this is why this happens all the time. This is why a lot of times you're inside a client uh, review and then you have like, you know, the, the 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 colorist is grading on this super expensive Sony, you know, mastering monitor with a thousand nits, and it looks amazing. But then next to him, there's an SDR 100 nits monitor, and then next to it, there's a client preview LG monitor, and then next to it, there's like a big TV with 650 50 nits. And as you can see from this screen, none of them match. They don't match in color. They don't match in luminance. They don't match on every anything. And this is one of the issues. It's impossible for you to match them all because some of them are LEDs and some of them are OLEDs. No matter how much you work, you can get them close, but they will never, never match. And we'll talk about how we can solve that. But this is like, you know, it's confusing, right? Like you kind of get like, oh my God, what the hell am I going to do with this? And, um, you know, let's keep on going. As I said, this, this presentation is more about making you aware of these issues and also making you investigate more about it. So then we have the, you know, not only we talked about the color spaces and we talked about all of that crap, Let's talk about the bit, you know, like the bit depth, you know, like to bit or not to bit. So you all know the distinguish between 8-bit and 10-bit, and you, then you have 8-bit plus FCR, and then you have 10-bit, real 10-bit, and then you have 6-bit uh, plus FCR, and then it, it, it's a mess. And obviously, the more bits you have, the better, obviously, you know. So obviously, 10-bit would always have better grade, grades and, and will always have less bending, of course, just like the examples say. And the reason for that is because obviously 10-bit has a, a billion possible colors as opposed to only 16 million colors. And of course, if you go to 12-bit, which is like DPX and specialized monitors, which, by the way, most monitors can take an, a 12-bit signal, but they will broadcast it at 10-bit. So that's a different thing as well. But obviously, when you, once you get to 12-bit, then you have like 68 billion possible colors. And this is all about the range of your monitor. So obviously, if you have a monitor that's 10-bit versus a monitor that is 8-bit or 6-bit, you'll be more, um, uh, you know, you'll have more dynamic range to match what you've shot. Remember, when we looked uh, previously at those slides where you saw the color spaces, of all these cameras, most of them had beyond the color representation of a Rexon 09. And so, obviously, you want to be as close, previewing as close as you can to what you shot with the camera. Obviously, it's not possible right now to have a 16-bit monitor or a 32-bit monitor, but you can at least have a 10-bit monitor, and you can also have monitors that have 12-bit signaling at least, you know, and then it, and they could have 14-bit LUTs, which we'll talk in a second. There's a lot of questions already. I can see that. Don't don't worry, everyone. I will go through the questions once we celebrate the anniversary with the cake and everything. So, um, then we also have the other thing, which is the temperature. There's also the correct temperature that the monitor should have and not the correct temperature the monitor should have. So, for example, if you think about the Kelvin temperature chart, which basically plots from reds to blues and everything in between, which usually the soft spot for people to work is between 4,000 to 7,000. That's really usually where we have the whitest light possible. Um, if you, for example, look, and this, this is part of what I said on the very beginning about communication and talking with your clients and all those things. For example, if you go to Netflix right now, you have specific delivery formats that you were given by them for your image that you want to deliver. So, for example, if you want to deliver an HD image, they are specifically telling you that it should be, you know, if it's HDR, it should be on P3 format with D65 of color, which is 6,500 Kelvin. And it should be an SD 2084PQ, which is a, a type of HDR that, that exists right now. There are several standards for HDR. And it can be 12-bit. If you're doing SDR, then we're talking about Rex 709, which is the same as BT 709, by the way. So then the delivery would be Rex 709 at a temperature of 6,500 Kelvin, and they would be on a gamma 2.4. We haven't talked about gamma, but we'll go in a minute about that. And it should be 10-bit for the image. Now, on the other hand, you have 4K, 
And on, by the way, the color encoding would be 444, so that means that we have the full range of colors in the image. Now, in terms of uh, full HD, it's very similar. It's still the same data, still the same P3 HDR format, and then the Rex 09 format for the SDR. Now, <clears throat> if you want to really investigate and play around with color temperatures, I would really advise you to get this. This is only a pound 99. This is an application called Light Spectrum Pro, and it's really cool. Uh, I'll show you. It, it works on your phone, um, you know, and obviously it's not as good as a, as a real spectrometer, of course, you know, so obviously it's not uh, the same, uh, but I'm going to just like um, show you what I mean. Um, let's just... Uh, let me just show you what I mean by using QuickTime, uh, because then I can show you the spectrometer working. Uh, and this is a, a really great way for you to um, learn about color temperature and learn how to actually do that. Uh, sorry, I'm having a bit of an echo here. I should have my phone here somewhere. I'm just like gonna, I should have my phone connected to this. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna try to do here and try to share the content of my phone by, sh by, by screen sharing. Sorry guys, you know, you know the drill. This is a um, garbage truck on fire uh, happening right there. If you just give me a second, I will, um, <laughs> I will uh, show you this. Um, I'm just like trying to get it to work because obviously now that I needed it, it doesn't work. Because why would it, right? Yeah, it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't. Why would it work, right? <sighs> I love I love technology. We all love it, don't we? I think it's going to work. It's going to actually go to my Oh well. You know, I I can't do it. So I'll do it manually. <laughs> Sorry guys. I tried my best. So um I can't really do it. Um I'm trying to link it to my computer. So you're going to have to see it like this. So um, I'm going to just do it manually here. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Oops, 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 oops. And now we really have a garbage truck on fire here because I've just spilled my Coke. Give me just one second. Just spilled a little bit of Coke. Just bear with me for a second. No, you can't you can't fast forward yet because it's not on the future. Sorry guys, uh my fault there. Very sorry about that. Uh but we are back in business. So this is what I was talking to you about. This is the uh, application I'm talking about, which is the light spectrum. And the cool thing about this application is that it tells, tells you with the phone, which by, by just by two pounds, it can give you actually the full readout of the color temperature. So for example, I'm pointing at my, at my desk right now, and obviously the color temperature is about 3,300 Kelvin. But if I switch on the light, you know, then obviously the the Kelvin is going to change because the light is actually this light is quite red, so this is now three thousand Kelvin instead. So, so this app is really cool for you to kind of like you know, um, no, my mouse pad was untouched by the way. <laughs> so um, you know, it's um, it's not going to get sticky, you know, because I think I've I've caught it in time. So uh, anyway. Let's move on. 
um, with the rest because this was just for me to show you this application and it just kind of like went a bit nuts there. Um, anyway, so, and why is this important? This is important because for you to work and deliver something, you need to know what you're delivering and you need to really know the color temperature. Not you, you see, this is starting to really become complicated, right? So for you to have proper control about your color, you need to learn about color spaces. You need to learn about color profiles. You need to learn about ICC profiles. You need to learn about gamma. You need to learn about Kelvin temperature, which is what you're talking about now. This is why I was saying that it's impossible to learn this today. This is, I'm hoping, a way for you guys to guys and girls to become excited about this and to actually research yourself. So obviously Kelvin temperature starts, you know, about a thousand, which is a candle light, which is the reddest light that you can really find, and goes all the way to a clear blue sky, which is a 10,000 Kelvin, uh, you know, and all of us obviously on and between. Now, currently, the workflow of visual effects and the workflow of deliveries is currently set at 6,500 Kelvin, which is literally the D65 from those deliveries you saw there from Netflix. So that's what the D65. So obviously, if you're going to work in video or work in editing or work in visual effects, you have to make sure your monitor can do a D65 color space. So that you have, sorry, that it has a D65 color Kelvin temperature. So, and then also you have the conversation between gamma 2.2 and gamma 2.4 and gamma 2.6 and gamma 1.8 and whatever and sRGB and all those conversations. And so obviously when you look at the gammas, they're all very different. So this is an image from ViewSonic, for example. And as you can see, you know, um, gamma really ranges from dark to bright. So let's uh, talk about the most the most typical gammas that you would use on your screen or that you would use for delivery. So, <clears throat> for example, gamma 2.2, which is quite bright, which is very similar to sRGB, would be what we would consider the normal use of the day-to-day -day computer. So that means you are in your office, you know, it's an office setting with a lot of indirect lighting. Usually for sh the shadows look quite foggy and lifted. So that's why that's why when you when you close the lights down, an sRGB or, or, a, or a gamma 2.2 image, you know, basically looks really washed out. And that's, that's because gamma 2.2 and sRGB was, was created for office work. It was created for you to have a light environment and a bright environment around you and so that you can still see the blacks because if they were too dark, then you wouldn't ever see them, you know. Um, so, so that's what you would consider for Gamma 2.2. So whenever you're delivering to someone that is, you know, watching something on a bright environment, then it should be 2.2. So for example, if you're delivering something that will be viewed, you know, imagine you're delivering an animation or a film that will be, she will be seen on, on, on a lobby of a bank, or if, the, if it's going to be on a bright lobby, or if it's going to be on, watched on a screen, most likely it will be a 2.2 so that you can actually see it better. <clears throat> now, 2.4 is usually used for darkened environments. So 2.4 is the standard for visual effects and grading. And that's when you basically, you know, on this one, you usually have about 25% of light on your screen, uh, like at least 25% on the environment. And on 2.4, that's when you have at least between 1% to 10% of lighting uh, inside your suite. So obviously, you know, it's the equivalent of watching television at night with the living room. So 2.4. And this is this is one of the reasons why, for example, you know, uh, Game of Thrones last year, the the last season looked so dark because it was actually, uh, you know, it's so obvious that it was graded to be dark on a gamma 2.4. And that's why it looks so dark. So, you know, it's watching television at night on a living room. Under these conditions, the danger of the image washing out is much less, and the dark parts of the image are easier to see. Hence, gamma 2.35 or 2.4 are used in dim but not blacked out viewing environments. Gamma 2.4 is recommended for the color suites and color correction. Lighting environments should be set to 1% to 10%, with 1% being used on the most high-end master suites. And there's a big debate on this, of course, because if you have your environment set to 1% of lighting, as you see, this is a photo from the mill, for example. This is the color suite where I was, this is a short film I was grading at the mill. So uh, from Duncan, uh, Dun Duncan Gammer. So, um, you know, directed by him. So this, this is the biggest debate. Like, 
some everyone watched this at 1% of lighting. Every, everything was color corrected at 2.4. So everything looks dark. But why does it look dark on your phone? Why does it look dark on other displays? Well, the reason for that is because your delivery wasn't correct. You know, most likely you've kept the 2.4 and did not deliver maybe a Rect 709 or deliver a 2.2 for different appropriate deliverables for that project. And then, of course, last but not least, we have the Gamma 2.6, which is used on cinema. And this is would be like a pitch black, you know. Gamma 2.6, which would be the gamma setting used for blacked out viewing conditions, typically a movie theater. Gamma 2.2 and 2.4 generally, generally look too flat and dim in black box conditions. Hence, for DCI delivery, cinema is gamma 2.6 is specified. No ambient lighting, so your eyes need to get used to the dark room, you know. So, um, now, and then, you know, to make things even more complicated, then we have the nits debate, you know, because the images on a screen are usually measured by the amount of nits that the screen has. And this is a big, big marketing thing. You know, a lot of people say like, oh, my screen has a thousand nits. Oh, my screen only has 200 nits. Oh, my screen only has 100 nits. Well, to be honest, like the, the whole thing with this is that nits, of course, have to do with the amount of brightness of, a, of an image can be. And obviously, if you talk about SDR, the maximum you're really going to have is probably 100 nits. Like anything that you grade that is going to be delivered for SDR, so standard uh, dynamic range, it will always be between 80 to 100 nits maxim. It will never go higher. So that means sun on water, explosions, white paper will always be there on the 80 to 100 nits mark. Now, if you look at HDR, it can be almost infinite. You know, Usually screens are usually set to 1,000 nits, but obviously, you can still have HDR with less nits, obviously, but then it just clamps out because the range can go all the way to 10,000 nits. So it is usually, you know, usually you have 80 to 100 for dark uh, color suites. So usually it's 80 to 100 nits of light intensity for a screen if you're working on a, a color suite in a dark room. It's usually 120 nits if you're working on a regular environment, like you know, uh, photo like if you're working on an office or if you're working on a, on a visual effects uh, company. You know, uh, now someone is asking what nits are. Nits are basically the value of light. Um, you know, I, I don't have the specific name of what it is. You know, I can probably research somewhere, but. But the biggest problem with nits, though, like especially on HDR, this is a photo I took a couple of months ago when I was streaming uh, Last of Us 2, is that when you have a very bright uh, screen with nits, with a thousand nits, it can become really bright. And obviously, I made a joke here where I where we have, where we actually have like a, I have some shades just to save myself from it. Um, anyway, now. Now let's now that we've talked all about that, let's now look into the limitations, you know, because the most important thing, you know, you know, we talked about the nits, we talked about the the the, the gammas, we talked about the kelvins, we talked about, you know, the 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 bit range of the monitors, we talked about the SDR, the LCD, the LED. So the most important advice probably I will give you today is really for you to know the limits of your own screen. And so if you can't afford to buy a new screen, then at least you can check the limitations that your screen has so that you can deliver according to what your screen can do. So I'll give you an example. This is my main monitor. The one is in front of me. So um, as you can see from here, this one here is the SW321C, 4K monitor, 10-bit display, but it's 8-bit plus FCR. It's not 10-bit. It's 8-bit eight eight uh, plus FCR. And then this one on this side is the SW320, which is actually a 10-bit display. Um, so that's the older version of this one. But this is a... This is a, a, an older technology. It's using a medical display to display the 10-bit. By the way, why do I know this? Why do I know that it is a medical display and it's 10-bit and 8-bit and this and that? I know this because I've contacted BenQ. This is one of the perks of, of being an ambassador. I can talk to their engineering team. So I've always asked them all the time questions. I'm sure that they are fed up of my questions probably because I keep asking questions all the time. I am sorry about that, BenQ. Uh, anyway, going back to the show. So knowing the limits of your screen is incredibly important. So I, for example, know that my screen only has the main screen I have here, which can do HDR, 
but it can do HDR, and, and, but as you can see, it only has 250 nits. That means that it's absolutely perfect to do grading in Rexon Zone 9 because it can do 80 nits uh, really well. It's absolutely perfect for sRGB because it can do 120 nits. But if I want to do grading in HDR, I can't use it because 250 nits is not enough for you to do HDR grading. It's more than enough for you to work. It's more than enough for you to check stuff. It's more than enough for you to play a game or watch a movie, of course. And I think, in fact, the HDR of this monitor is beautiful. You know, it looks beautiful when I'm playing PlayStation 4 or, uh, or Xbox uh, on this monitor, but I would never grade HDR on this monitor. In fact, why don't I? Because I know the limits of my screen. You know, I know the limits of my equipment. I know that I can't deliver HDR because I don't have at least a thousand nits. And you won't, it, like, according to the specifications of Netflix, for example, this is just Netflix. Amazon is the same. You know, they are very specific on telling you. Well, actually, sorry, it's not on this screen. I think it's somewhere else. Um, there was, yeah, I think I forgot to put that screen. But there's another, there's another graphic they have that specifically says that it has to be graded to a thousand nits. So if I would do a job for Netflix, I could not use this monitor. What I would do is most likely I would uh, rent an HDR monitor somewhere. You know, I would probably rent it somewhere, um, just so that I can do that. And also the limitations that I know is that I know for a fact that. I only have a response time of five milliseconds. I know I only have a thousand to one concert ratio. I can only really do four K, so I can't deliver eight K on it because it's not native four K. And it it ha it does have one point seven billion colors, but that's another conversation for another day. It does it displays ten bit, but it's not ten bit. It's eight bit plus FCR, which is a technology that emulates the two extra bits that are missing. So it's the technology that actually looks pretty good, but it's not as good as 10-bit, but it is still pretty good. But most people, most manufacturers of monitors don't often say these things out loud because a lot of times when they say 8-bit, people are really, uh, really thinking it should be 10-bit. But you need to understand that it's not BenQ's fault. It's not really LCLG's fault. Any manufacturer, ICES, you know, all these manufacturers do the same. The reason why they don't do full 10-bit displays is because they are so expensive to build, you know. And and in fact, if you want to buy a real 10-bit display, you're paying a fortune, you know. Right now, you have to pay 5,000 pounds to get one, for example. So it is more than enough to use 8-bit plus FCR. And in, and in fact, a lot of people actually have 8-bit monitors and they think it's 8-bit. But those 8-bit monitors are actually not 8-bit. They are 6-bit plus FCR. So that's another conversation for another day, not today. <laughs> uh, so now that I have this, I know my limitations of my second monitor as well. So for example, my second monitor, which is the SW320, has a maximum nit of 350. So if you compare both of them, you can kind of see that one of them is 31.5 uh, inches, the other one is 32. Uh, one of them is 250 nits, the other one is 350 nits. 350 nits is better, but it's still not enough for HDR grading. It's enough for previewing, not grading. And then, of course, I know that uh, you know the older one only has 99% of Adobe RGB. That means it only picks up 99% of the entire Adobe RGB spectrum, and it picks up 100% of sRGB. It doesn't really mention Rexons Online, although I know from a fact BenQ told me that it does have Rexons Online 100%. And then the other monitor has 95% of P3, for example, which is good for cinema displays as well. So this is what I'm talking to you. You need to know the limitations of your monitor. You need to know the limitations of what you are using to deliver something, you know. So that's very, very important. Otherwise, you should not be working on things that are beyond the equipment you have. Now, let's now, now that we've talked about all of these things, you know, color spaces, nits, gamma, and again, guys and girls, you know, this topic is huge. So it's not like you're going to know everything today, and there's so much to research, but at least this gives you a starting uh, point for this. Now, Let's talk about display calibration because, as I said on the beginning, all these monitors from BenQ, from Asus, from you know, all these professional monitors have a calibration from the factory. And as much as I believe that they've done the calibration, the problem I have with this is that the calibrations never really match. 
And they don't match because obviously during transportation, during, you know, temperature changes, during, uh, you know, using your monitor or not, especially because you tend to have to calibrate your monitor every six months. The calibration that was done on the factory might be months old. It might be a year old. And to prove this, I've actually proved this last year because I was having a debate with uh, with BenQ about this, and and I actually just checked it myself. So, so this is Kalman, which is a professional application for you to uh, test, um, you know, and calibrate uh, monitors. And as you can see on the right side, I have the test results of the color checker for the factory calibration. So as you can see, it's all green. It still passes. It basically has an average delta of 0.9 and a max of 4.3. Now, <clears throat> I know this is confusing, but basically what this means is that the average delta of error is 1.9. Now, you always want to use a monitor that has less than two error, you know? So any monitor that has an average delta of below two is already considered pretty good. Obviously, if your monitor goes below one, it's even better, you know. So the, the smaller the error factor it is, the, the error means the distance between the actual color and the calibration. So, for example, if you look at these images here, you can clearly see that the, where, for example, the square is, is where the color is. And you can see the circles, sometimes they don't hit the color correctly. And this is where you have the error of how much difference your monitor has. So uh, from what the color should be, that's why you use a meter to check that. So on the left side, you have, and I, guys, I, I, I'm sorry, this is taking so long. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can rewatch this later, I'm sure. You know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, that you can watch this later. Uh, but um, uh, someone was complaining about compression. It, is the quality bad? I, I have not used, um, I have not used uh, YouTube streaming yet. This is the first time. Can anyone on, uh, confirm me on the chat that actually it looks okay, the image and the quality and everything? Does it look okay on YouTube? Is it on HD? It should be on HD. Can anyone say that? There's so much delay. I don't even know how, how long the delay is. It's probably a lot because I, I don't see anyone writing on the chat, so the delay is probably huge. <laughs> It's okay. It's 1080p. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so as you can see on the left side, we have an average delta of zero of 1.9, which is very, very good. We have a luminance of 84, which, like I said, for Rexon 09, this, by the way, was the check for Rexon 09. So 84.5 um, CD meter. Uh, basically, it's the color, the nits that we were talking about. It's 84.5, and it's 09. Now, after I manually calibrated my monitor. I got to 0 0.9 of average delta and a maximum of 2. So that means that I've actually slashed the error by half. And my white luminance is actually much more correct with an 81 white luminance instead of an 85, which means I'm closer to the 80 sweet spot of Rexim 9 you know, there. So I, th I think that's where you want to really go. You really want to always calibrate your monitors because never trust anything. And again... Sometimes it's even worse, you know, for example, when I first got the monitor, I got a fail, you know, I actually got, using the software from BankQ, I actually, f it failed completely, I had an average delta of 2.7, it should be below 2, but obviously after, uh, you know, after like a firmware update, then I managed to get it to 1.3, so... This is why I was saying never trust anything, you know, because it, there might be some of the problems, you know, it's, you always need to like check your monitors, check your calibration, check if it can achieve what you're trying to do. And as you can see here, it failed, but now it's correct. It's now doing 1.3 of average delta. And this is for uh, D65, 6,500 Kelvin of temperature, of color temperature. So it's like slightly bluish tint. Then you have Rexon 09 of color uh, science here. This is not an H HDR. I'm not sending it on HDR. I would never calibrate it on, on HDR because it's 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 pointless because it only does 250 nits. Um, so always check these things. And again, same thing goes here. You know, for the other monitor I have, the factory is on the right side with a 2.2 average delta. And then after calibrated, I got... But this is for the, for the DCI P3. So DCI P3 always has to be much lower than Rexon 09 because it's a cinema. So the, the actual luminosity is about 50 nits instead of 80 nits. And as you can see from the factory calibration, which, by the way, don't forget, it was here. It says 
the calibration says that the average delta was 1.1. That's what it came with the monitor. It was 1.1. And then when I actually did it, it actually did 2.2. So it actually did double of what the factory calibration was. But after color correcting it and using a, a, a light meter, I basically manage, um, you know, ma basically managed to lower it to one. So I managed to lower it to a very, very similar place to the Piper that they've sent. So again, never trust anyone, <laughs> especially in color, because you don't know who controlled it. You always have to be the one checking everything yourself. Now, how do you calibrate a monitor? That's the whole thing, right? You know, so first of all, your monitor has to have several picture modes. So the, the whole point with this is that the, your, these are starting points. So have you, a lot of you probably noticed that your monitor has like a Rexon 9 mode and has an HDR mode and it has an sRGB mode and, and an emission mode and a, a dark room mode. All these modes are from factory and they are good starting points. So if you are basically, you know, trying to do something fast, more than enough, for you to do that, you know, to use Rexon 9 from the factory calibration, but often you cannot do that. Often you have to control your monitor, and again, it's very important for you to have total control over your monitor. You want to have brightness, contrast, sharpness, gamma, color temperature, hue, saturation. You want to have as many, many controls as possible so that you can control every single thing, including the color temperature, like, uh, like I was telling you which in this case is set to 6,500, just like we talked about, which is the standard for visual effects and for editing and for anything delivered in cinema. Sorry, not on cinema, on video and on streaming. The same goes for gamma. You want to make sure you have something that has a control over gamma so that you can change. And I know a lot of TVs just have uh, high gamma, low gamma, middle gamma, and it's a, it sucks because it doesn't really help you a lot. But... What I would recommend you is to get like an, uh, a Display Pro. This is kind of the cheapest thing you could have, you know, uh, so that you can call it correct. Now, there's two versions. I'll, I'll show you both. Um, so, so there is the, they just recently, just a, So just, they just recently released a new one. So um, I used to use this one. This is the iDisplay Pro uh, from X-Rite. And now they just released a new one, which is this one, which is the iDisplay Pro Plus. Now the iDisplay Pro Plus, the difference really is that it can do HDR. So that one uh, can do all the way to 2000 nits. That's the maximum that it can do. Um, so that's what I would recommend. And I'll show you. I have it here. Because um, I was hoping to calibrate with you, but I'm not sure if we're going to have the time. Um, so this is the, the spectrometer. So as you can see, it has like a little sensor there, and it has like a, a glass, and then it has also like the ambient lighting as well. Uh, really cheap. It's like the, the plus one for HDR is about 250 pounds. The other one is like 150 pounds. And I, I think you guys have to buy this. There is no way around this, okay? And... The reason for that is because you you really need to take control of your color. You know, you need to take control of what you're showing. You need to take control of your screen and really go through the limitations of that screen. So I would really recommend you to use the iDisplay Pro. The iDisplay Pro brings its own software. Now, obviously, there's kind of three ways of doing this. You can either get an iDisplay Pro and use the software that comes with it. And that's a software-based color correction. So basically, it calibrates your screen. You can follow the instructions. And it creates what we call an ICC, which is a color profile on your system that basically balances the image to match what they think should be Rexon 9 or what they think should be uh, you know, sRGB and all those things. Um, obviously, if you have a monitor, a more professional monitor, then you might be able to do hardware calibration. Hardware calibration is different because it actually brings in the ICC color profile, not to the system, but actually to the computer itself. So the computer has a hardware calibration LUT inside. So that means it's a table of content of color that it does that. And I, I know I'm now reaching and there's so much more that you need to learn about this, but...
Kalman, of course, is another software that I really recommend. It's a software from Portrait Displays. If you really have the money, you should try to get it. It's really expensive, so I, I don't really recommend it. I would recommend you to just at least invest on an x -Rite. Um And that's really it. Like, basically, just put it on the screen. And, and I was hoping to do it live on the on the chat here, but I don't think I'll have time because we, we still have so many questions to go through and I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Um, you know, yeah, you, you, uh, Chazelle is really right here. You need to first invest on a good monitor, but then, you know, after you do this, then you can calibrate it and actually get this thing as close as possible. As you can see here, this is an sRGB calibration, which is zero four of error with 120 nits, which is the perfect. And, and even that, even though it's zero four our error, you can kind of see that some of the colors are not matching either. The other thing you can do with these kind of um, uh, 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 meters is you can also calibrate and check parts of your screen because certain parts of the screen might have more wear and tear. So that's why, you know, um, that's why I think you need to get an X-Rite at least, you know, so that you can check if the corners of your screen are getting vignetted or if there's any kind of vignetting happening on your ICC profile. Now, this conversation is already get taking too, way too long and I wasn't really expecting uh, so much people to be here <laughs> and I wasn't expecting really to take so long. I am do apologize that it's been taking so long. But the, the other conversation, which I'm going to wrap up and I go faster on this section here, is the reference monitor. Now, this, this has to do with not just what you watch in your display. It has to do with the video signal. A lot of times people think that they can just watch the video output on another monitor. The problem with that is that then you're watching it through the color space in the ICC profile of the actual computer. And if you use a if you use a display uh, if you actually use a video card in this situation, for example, imagine using a Black Magic video card. It could be this one, which is the one I have, uh, which is the Ultra uh, Studio 4K Mini, or it could be any of the ones they have. They have deck links. They have these are the cheapest ones, of course. There's other manufacturers, but the reason why the reason why this is important is because this is the only way you have to actually display a pure a uh, Rexon 9 signal or a pure HDR signal. And I'm talking about not having, uh, you know, I'm not talking about, um, um, I'm not talking about having actual, you know, watching a video signal through, through an ICC profile could be dangerous. Because when you're watching it through a deck link signal, then you know for a fact that the deck link is either outputting a Rex 9 signal or Rex 2020, which is the delivery. And then your screen could be calibrated for such, you know. So that's the thing. And, um, and cold VFX, you are right. I'm not talking about uh, apply LUTs in Nuke. I'm talking about ICC color profile, which is what your computer has as a profile. Normally, computers come with an sRGB color profile. And again, guys, this is so complicated and it's so much information. You know, I'm hoping that you can at least start your journey into color by, use, by looking at this um, presentation. There's so much more, so much more, you know, because it's like this is a massive, uh, massive topic. So I use video cards. I've been using video cards for 20 years so that I can actually output the true video of either RGB or uh, YUV or even like inter interlace if I need to or frame paste. You know, if I really want to do Rex 6601, which is the old SD or Rex 720 or uh, Rex 2020. So this is kind of the way that you want to go if you want to really work in video if you're an editor or if you are a grader or a colorist or if you're finishing you know if you're finishing something you really need to look into this but obviously all of these are things you could think of, of. um you know because that's the only way really that you're going to have a bypass of ic profile um you know so that you don't have double color profile on your monitor when you're viewing video because that's the issue, uh, you know, and I'll show you in a minute. So uh, the other thing I did get was I, I did show this on another stream. I, I have like a test pattern generator, and this is really nothing more than something to build test patterns. You know, um, I really would recommend to if you have the, the money to get one so that you can actually do color bars. And, and this is the only way you're going to really calibrate 
your monitor for video signal. But um, let's uh, move on. If you don't have money to get this, because this is really expensive, then I would advise you to maybe get the Forge DVDs. These are Blu-rays, 4K Blu-rays. I have both of them. I have the HD version and the 4K HDR version. At least they can kind of give you some control over color bar so that you can actually call it, call it corrected, you know. Um, so Dinkwell Winkle was asking, does your video card plug into your GPU? No, it does not. No, the video card is a separate PCI card which only output video signal only, you know. That's the, the way that it works. Um, so... So let's continue. Then, of course, after all of this stuff that we just discussed, you also have to think about lighting, <laughs> okay? Lighting of your screen as well, because obviously if you're inside a room, you want to make sure your lighting also matches what you're watching. So, for example, I'll give an example. If you have your lighting set to 7,000 Kelvin and you're previewing something that is 6,000 Kelvin, then you have a discrepancy. So imagine that you are working with 5,000 Kelvin lighting, but then your monitor is set to 6,000 Kelvin. Then you're going to start having this, like you're going to have a, a dissonance of color between the screens. This becomes really complicated, you know. Um, so I personally, this is my old office. Obviously, my new office is different now. Um, you know, I personally have everything controlled by my phone. So if I want, for example, I can switch off everything, you know. Um, I have these apps on my phone, which I can control the lighting. So, for example, I can switch off all my LEDs. So that means I can actually switch off all the in interior lighting that I have. So now I have no lighting on my room. The only thing that is lit up right now is through my screens. My screens are the only ones actually litting up the screen, nothing else. And if I want, I can have, you know, my front light on if I need to, um, or I can switch it off or I can actually uh, turn on or turn off my front light, my side light, uh, if I want to as well. Or if I really I am into it, I can switch on my top lights as well. Obviously, my top lights will be very powerful and they have a lot of light, you know. And so the reason I do this and the reason why I'm controlling them with my phone is because then if I'm controlling with my phone, I can actually control the Kelvin level of my lighting. That means I can actually have the specific lighting I want, you know. I'm going to just switch off my lights here. Um, so let me just switch it off. Um, and that, w what does that mean? That means that, for example, you can do stuff like that. You can have the Kelvin to white if you want to. Or if you really want to, you could have like a red tint if you prefer. Or you can have a blue tint, which I'm not, I'm not really advocating that you should. <laughs> because you shouldn't. But um, this is the cool thing about having these kind of lightings is because you can really put whatever Kelvin lighting you really want on your screen. Um, let me just, uh, I think I switched it off. Yes, there we go. So now, for example, we're living in hell, for example. So uh, this is an important topic. It's an important topic because, you know, just like I said, you need to control your environment so that you, the colors on your screen match. You know, that's the thing. So that's the key thing that I'm trying to transmit with this idea. Uh, I'm going to leave this red. This red is beautiful. I'm going to leave this red. Why not? Um, so... Um, goes back to this. This is my old office, of course. But in here, as you can see, this is no lighting. And then I have completely control of lighting with complete control of Kelvin's temperatures as well. Uh, I think this with red is, is a bit bit awkward. So I'm, I'm just going to put this to white because um, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm, I'm on, on some kind of club or something. So I need to like switch on my lights a bit here. So uh, that's light. Yeah. So, um, so controlling your lighting is very important, and of course you can switch. Now, there's a lot of lights out there. Um, I personally use uh, these. I have the BenQ light bar. The reason I have the light bar, I really like it because you can actually, um, you know, um, you can actually do this. You can actually switch it on here. Um, and then I have lighting on my room here. So that actually can, you know, if I want to read the book or if I want to, like, um, check something on my keyboard. And these lightings are also Kelvin controlled. I can also control them in Kelvin temperature. And I also can dim them as well if I want to. The cool thing about these bars is that they actually don't reflect on the screen. They don't even touch the screen when you're looking at them. They only really, you know, I, I don't know if you notice on the screen there, but you can see that it doesn't really affect the screen, uh, which is really, really cool cool um but yeah anyway this is not a, an endorsement of this light I, I like these lights there's a lot of brands out there doing the same and um, the other ones that i also use besides the monitor light screen bar plus 
is this one here. I have the lift, uh, lift, uh, uh, the LIFX lights bulbs on the top, which are controlled by uh, Apple uh, Smart Home, so Apple HomeKit. So I can control them through there. And then I also have the Smart Plus LED stripes uh, from Osram as well. So. So that's how you can kind of control. Now, obviously, I don't have clients coming in because this is now COVID-19 uh, uh, world. Uh, but at least I can at least see and control my environment when I'm working. So this is the only way for me to get to this. You know, like, remember, I was looking at showing you when I'm doing call the correction. Remember, if you're just browsing the web, then you're probably having 20% of lighting on your screen So because you, you don't want to hurt your eyes. And if you're doing just like some call to correction, maybe you put 10%, but then if you're doing real call to correction, you have zero. You know, I have 1%. This is like 1% of lighting on the room right now. So this is important depending on what you're trying to deliver. You know, if you're delivering really high-end call to correction, then I go to 1% of lighting on my room. If you want to like just deliver like a comp or something or an edit, then 25%, like 10% is more than enough. If you want more, then you have 25. So now... This is this presentation is already taking way too long, so um, I'm going to just give you some notes here. So, um, for reading, really, for you to learn more about this, I would definitely recommend these two books at least, the Visual Effects uh, Society book. Um, this is the third edition. It has a huge chapter about color. It has a huge chapter as well. Um, you know. Uh, just dedicated to um, uh, to HDR as well. And then on the right side, I would really recommend Color Correction Handbook, second edition, Professional Techniques for Video and Cinema. There's a lot of information on this book about how to set up your suite and how to deal with color. And obviously, these books don't show everything. These books are just the starting point. Okay, I really want you to understand that that this is a huge topic, and and all of you need to understand that th this is going to take a long time for you to really like get grips of this topic, you know. Now, if you're really, really geeky, <laughs> then you can get these books. Like if you're a huge nerd like me, like I am, then I would recommend you um, Digital Video and HD Algorithms and Interfaces from Charles Ponton. I'm sorry, I, I didn't, didn't say that uh, the Visual Effects Handbook is edited by Jeffrey O'Conn and Susan Zerman. Uh, and then Color Correction Handbook, second edition, is from Alexi Van Hurkman. Um, and then I would recommend Digital and Video HD Algorithms and Interfaces by Charles Ponton from Morgan Kaufman. And then, of course, if you really want to get nerdy, you have Michael Stoom's Color Reproduction in Electric Image Systems. Now, these books are really, really, really deep. Okay, just want to make sure everyone knows that these books, if, you, if it, these are the books you want to read, if you really want to know everything about color, about color space, about HDR, about ACES, obviously you have to keep uh, updating the book because the book, they keep doing multiple versions and editions. And so I guess this is going to wrap up my presentation. Uh, don't forget that none of this is possible for you to learn right away. Okay. And. After the presentation, I'll show you a couple of more things. But in conclusion, really, for my keynote uh, today, I want you to make sure you understand that you should not trust anyone. You should always try to call the correct and do everything you are supposed to do for your own system. Um, always triple check everything. Don't double check. Always triple check. You need to communicate with your clients always. You have to communicate with clients as much as you can so you can pick a standard to deliver. So, for example, if your client wants Rex 9, then you should have everything set to Rex 9 on your team. If you want to deliver P like P3 for the cinema, you need to have everything on P3 on your entire team. So, and also pick a standard for the entire team. So, if you're going to go with Aces, go for Aces. Don't have anything uh, else, you know. And, of course, know the limits of your screen. You really need to know the limits of what your screen can do. You saw there that, for example, my screen is not suitable for HDR grading, but it's still good enough to watch it at least. Now, keep in mind that you should always read more about these. I'm going to post um, uh, links and some articles about um, some of the stuff. I'll do that at the end of the stream. Uh, and also post, I'll post links for you to study on the actual description of this video, which will be 
will be online in a couple of hours. It won't be online right away. But I'm sure if you return tomorrow, you can watch the video again. Um, but yeah, don't forget that books are not doorstops, okay? <laughs> so you should always read books, not just use them as doorstops. Um, and for doorstops, you can buy some cuddly, uh, funny cat doorstops instead of just having doorstops as books. So always uh, don't forget that. Now, um, for all of you, don't forget to follow Hugo's Desk on my YouTube channel. Um, can't wait to reach to 50,000 subscribers. That's what I'm trying to reach now. Also, if you want to help out my channel, go to Patreon as well. Uh, and, of course, follow me on Twitch, uh, Twitter as well, Hugo C. Guerra. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this show. And I, I, I think, um, you know, I think this topic, as I said, is huge, okay? I really cannot emphasize how big it is, okay? And I had a lot more things I wanted to show you. You know, I, I wanted to, like, show you you know, my setup here and how do I usually work, you know, because I usually have this monitor set to video previewing and then that monitor set to to um, to some scopes and then this monitor set to something else. But I think I'm going to do another stream about that. I think maybe I'll do a stream about that. Uh, you know, I think that would be the ideal scenario. Um, I, I don't think we, you know, we've already been, how long have we been on this online? We've been on online for a while now. So this topic is way too big, and I think we need to, like, you know, rest up and clear our heads and then move on. As I explained to everyone, this is a, a celebration of my anniversary of my YouTube channel, so I'm going to get the cake, and I'm going to get the champagne, and then we're going to do the giveaway. Uh, so, But first, we're going to do a quick break, okay? So it will be a very quick break. A five minutes break, and uh, you guys need to go all stretch your legs, get some water, and then I'll I'll bring the cake, I'll bring the drink, and and then we're gonna do the giveaway while we celebrate Hugo's desks. Okay, so I'll be right back. Um, I'll see you very soon. Okay.
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. I've uh, changed my lighting for a more festive look, as you can see here. Uh, we have a more festive look today. So I have like my little champagne, like a party of one. <laughs> my Prosecco here, party of one. As you can see, we're going to celebrate the anniversary of Hugo's desk. This anniversary should have been like on August. Uh, obviously, um, I just wanted to like thank everyone for the amazing support you guys give me every day on um, in, on what we're doing. So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. So we're going to do the champagne and the cake, and then I'm going to do the giveaway. And then after the giveaway, whoever wants to stay, we're going to do the Q&A, okay? So I don't want to force anyone to stay here for longer. So we're going to probably do like 20 minutes of Q&A, like maybe 15 minutes of q and I'll, I'll answer some of the questions. I see that there's a lot of questions, but let's start with that. So first of all, Congratulations to everyone here. So thank you so much for supporting Hugo's Desk. It's been five years. It's been an amazing challenge. It's been also like problematic as well. I, I know that it's been, you know, tough for my students. You know, I, I haven't managed to finish the course and I am so sorry for that. And it's been horrible for them and it's all my fault. And, and you know, it's it has to do with, it has to do with personal, personal problems and stress problems and bad choices that I made, and I'm so sorry for that. Um, I can't apologize enough. I do apologize to my students all the time, but um, at least I cannot stop doing that. So thank you so much for all the support. You guys are amazing. Um, and I couldn't do this the, the channel without all of you. Thank you so much for that. Anyway, let's. Uh, my, my wife, my wife uh, bought a cake for me, so I have a little cake here. I also have like a little five here, as you can see. I have a little five I'm going to put on top of the cake. <laughs> So um, this is what it is. It's a f the fifth anniversary of Hugo's desk. I have a little cake here. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, light this up and let's just celebrate the anniversary of Hugo's desk. I'm here alone, though, but I'm not alone. I have 300 people watching. Uh, so thank you so much for all of this. Um, and thank you so much for all the help you all give me. And also, especially, thank you for all the support uh, you know, I know everyone here is doing so. Thank you so much. So, I guess happy birthday to Hugo's desk. Um, hopefully, we're gonna do 10 years and maybe 15 years, and maybe in 10 years, we'll have. I hey, oops, the fire is like extinguishing. That's not good. What's happening here? Wait a minute. Oh, guys, wait a minute. I need to do this again because the fire is gone. This is not a good omen, is it? It's not a good omen. Okay, maybe it's the... Ah, oh, this is not good. This is not a good omen. Maybe three is the charm. Hopefully it is. I'm going to move it really, really gently so it doesn't burn. So look, look at that. It's uh, Hugo's desk. I'm going to switch off the top lights because it just looks ridiculous. Not gonna do that. Um, so I'm gonna switch off. So everyone here, ah, oh, this is so so lame. This flame, isn't it? <laughs> what happened? Why is the the, the flame? Ah, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. There you go. Let me just see if I can work this flame out. <laughs> I need to fix it. Yeah, I need to comp a flame in, don't I? It's really bad. Look at that. It's so tiny. It's like super tiny. I guess I need to comp in a flame. Well, anyway, it's better than nothing, right? <laughs> we'll fix it in comp then. We'll we'll fix it later. Well, anyway, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to blow the candle now. And um, I'm going to just like uh, put it back to normal. I'm going to blow the candle. And thank you so much for more five years. I hope many, many more years and many, many more videos. So I'll see you uh, very soon. I'm going to just like uh, blow the candle now. There you go. That was really gentle. <laughs> so... And now I'm going to open up the the little, little, small, <laughs> very tiny champagne to celebrate that. Let's do this. Okay. So hopefully this doesn't do a disturbance. I hope not. I hope not, at least. Let's see if this opens up. Oops, I can hear it. That's not good. Oh, it, oh okay. That's lame. It's actually not a cork. <laughs> <laughs> that is really lame. <laughs> it wasn't a cork at all. It's literally just one, one, one. Okay, so. Cheers, everyone. Thank you so much. 
Hopefully you're all drinking as well. Uh, thank you so much for all the support over these years. Ah, that's nice. That's really nice. I hope I don't uh, blow it down, though. This is so lame. It has like a cork that is like a fake... It's like a fake cork. <laughs> Obviously, now I have to like also um, do this. Ah, that was disgusting. And then, of course, cut my cake. Promise we'll do the giveaway in a second. Oh, this is a tough cake. It is really tough cake. Such a quiet, right? Should have put some music. I'm gonna just have one sip and one one uh, part, and then we can uh, do the giveaway. Hmm, this is good. It's actually really good. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> I am shocked of how good it is. Uh, anyway, let's then do let's do the giveaway. And then after the giveaway, whoever wants to stay behind, um, we can. Um, whoever wants to stay behind, we will. Um, yeah. So we have <laughs> we have seven hundred <laughs> Jesus seven hundred and sixty three entrees. Look at that. That is impressive. It's very impressive, especially because only 300 people watched the stream. So that means half, like double of the people that didn't show up. <laughs> it's carrot cake, yes. How did you know that? That's amazing. You actually knew it was carrot cake. Well, anyway. Um, so we have 763 people. So I'm going to do the voting. So this is, I'm using an application called Glem to do the voting. As you can see here... Um, I don't want to share anything I don't want to share on the screen because otherwise you guys can see the emails of people. But as you can see, this is how I'm doing it. This is um, this is basically glam.io, and this is an application to do giveaways. I have 763 people entering, and I just need to press this button. Now, I'm not going to do it on the screen because I don't know if the email of the person shows up. So I might just do it out. <laughs> And um, and then we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna do the, the giveaway. So let's uh, let's uh, hold your horses. I'm gonna do the draw, the winners. Let's do that. So I have one winner only today. So I'm gonna click on the button, and then if it, it if it if it does everything, we should know who it is. So let me just do that. So I'm gonna click in five, four, three, two, one, and I'm gonna click. Uh. Okay. Okay, draw. Okay, cool. So I have a winner here. I don't want to show his name on the email. Um, let's see here if I can announce the winner on a widget or something. Uh, let's see if this works. I've never done this before. So hopefully this works. I hope so. Does it work? Sorry, guys. I'm I'm <laughs> trying to work this out. Where's the winner? Oh, man, I don't know what happened here. Let, sorry, guys. Just like okay, I can't really seem to show the winner here, so I I need to like um. So the name of the winner, I don't know if that's the name he's using on on uh, YouTube though. Like that's the thing. I have no idea. Uh, the name of the winner is Tan Num. That's the name of the winner. I have no idea it, who it is on on um, on YouTube. So winner winner is Tan Hum. So I don't know who that is. Is he still here? Are you still here? If Tan Num is here, please let me know so that I know that you're here. Who, where, where's Tan Num? Where is Tan Num? Is Tan Num here? If Tan Num is not here, I might not give it to him. <laughs> he has to be here. Come on, if he's not here, I'm going to roll the dice again. Is he here? 
You should have been here if you really wanted to win this monitor. Are you here, Ten Num? If you're not here, I'm gonna roll the dice again. Where is Ten Num? Is he here? So I'm gonna type it again. I'm gonna give him another chance. So the winner is Ten Num. If he's not here, I don't know what his name is on YouTube though. That's why I'm I'm talking to the 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 chat here. Um, <laughs> I think he's left. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I can't really show his email because I don't really. But yeah, he's from US. He's he's from California. So okay, so ten them is not here. Okay, cool. Well, is he ten here? Like, are you here, ten them? Okay, so ten them has about ten seconds to claim. Otherwise, if he's not here in the next ten seconds, I will just roll this thing again. I guess he's not here. Okay, I'm gonna roll again. Okay, so um, I'm going to. I guess how does this work? I'm going to unannounce the winner. <laughs> I guess I'm going to. I guess I guess the thing with this is that I should have told them the beginning that people had to be here. Is that too cruel now? Because he wasn't here. Maybe he thought he didn't have to be here. That's the thing, isn't it? Because because I forgot to mention on the beginning that you had to be here at the end. So what do you guys think? Do you think that I should, um, you know, do you think I should um, roll again? Or do you think it's unfair because I did not mention to everyone that they should be here if they wanted to win? I did forget to say that. Um, it's my fault. I should have said that. You guys think, do you think it's fair for me to roll again? Yeah. You think it was understood? Do you actually think it was? Because I I didn't mention everything. I think it's obvious that you have to be here for you to like like get the giveaway. Otherwise, why <laughs> why would you be here? Um, it's pretty obvious you have to be on the giveaway. Okay, okay, cool. So I'm gonna just do it again. Okay. So um, okay, so I'm going to like unannounce the winner and I'm gonna roll it again. Just give me a second. Um, so, okay, so, uh, I'm gonna not give him, so I'm gonna revoke the win, and I'm gonna announce again, okay, so I'm gonna draw it again, okay, so in five, four, three, two, one, and I have another winner here, okay, I think this time it's gonna be someone that is actually here, because I think I've seen him, so this time it is the... Winner, winner is, okay, so that's, why is it unfair? <laughs> so is he here? Okay, so Carbonara th thinks it's unfair. Okay, that's fine. Is he here, actually? Are you here? You are? Okay, excellent. So you just won a monitor, then a you monitor. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If I'll, I'll tell you what. If, if the other guy actually contacts me, I might try to get him one as well. I will say that, you know. If he contacts me, I'm pretty sure I can probably try to get him a monitor as well. It might not be the same monitor, but I can probably give him something else. So, so uh, I mean, I'm going to... So I'll do that. Um, so I'm going to butcher your name very much. I am so sorry for that. So I can really, I do not know how to pronounce your name, but I'm assuming it's Keshiti Kalamb. I, I'm sure I've butchered your name. I am so sorry uh, for that. Um, so uh, congratulations. I'm going to email you later on. Okay, so I'll, I'll email, I'll email you tomorrow, and then I'll start looking into shipping. I can see that you are from India. Um, and I'm going to ship you the monitor there. So uh, I'll contact you tomorrow. Congratulations. Congratulations for winning the monitor. There were 700 people signed up, and you you, you, you had... Yeah, num10, 10, 10 num, I would say already, like if 10 num wants to contact me, we can kind of sort something out. If he, if he, even, if, if he even exists. <laughs> 
Okay, congratulations. So let's uh, move on uh, to wrap up the stream with some questions, okay? So um, for those of you that don't want to stick around, thank you so much for being here because we have a lot of questions. I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to do all of them. It's too much. Uh, but uh, for those of you that want to stick around for the questions, you can stick around for the questions. If not, uh, I might decide to do all the questions later on as well because they like some of the questions later on because there are so many questions. Uh, so we're going to go with the Q&A. And I'm going to just open it up and see if we can uh, go through it. So I'm going to put it on the screen probably. So we, Well, I'm not going to put it on the screen. I'm just going to read it. Um, so, <laughs> okay, cool. So um, for those of you leaving, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Uh, for those of you sticking around, let's try to do the, the questions. So let's start with the first questions. Um, I'm going to try to uh, do these questions as fast as I can. Oh, my God, there's so many. What are you guys thinking? Do you think I can do all of that? There's so many questions. I am just shocked the amount of questions we have here. I think it's like hundreds of questions. Oh my God. Do you guys really think I can answer hundreds of questions? Damn, I should have done this before. <laughs> oh my God, this is so much. Well, first of all, I need to like scale this thing a bit. Otherwise, I'm not going to read the questions. Okay, cool. Okay, so there are so many questions. Okay, so I'm going to uh, start from the beginning, and then I, I think we're gonna give it like ten minutes and answer some questions, and then and then we'll. I'm probably gonna answer the questions later on if you guys don't 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 mind. So I'm gonna pick some questions. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. So Sajel asks Hugo, what is the difference between HDR and 10 bit? So Sajel. HDR and 10-bit are not the same, just so you know. So HDR is high dynamic range format, Rec 2020, for HDR filming and for watching movies in HDR or playing games in HDR. You can have HDR in 8-bit. You can have HDR on 10-bit. You can have HDR on 12-bit. So it is important for you to understand that HDR is just that how bright the image can be. 10-bit, 12-bit, and 10 and 8-bit is the quality of that of the colors displayed. So uh, obviously I have seen HD, fake HDR, which is an 8-bit HDR. I've seen it in games. I've seen it in films. I've also seen 10-bit HDR and 12-bit HDR. So it's not supposed to exist 8-bit HDR, but it does exist in certain games because some games are processing an 8-bit, although they have a dynamic range as well. So let's see here. Uh, more questions. Let's see here. Um... So uh, Dextube is asking, how often should monitors be recalibrated? So Dextube, it should be every six months, pretty much. That's the consensus of everyone. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Yeriel, Bertoni, Yeriel Bertoni says, what chair do you recommend to avoid back pain? Well, the chair I have is pretty good. I like it a lot. It's called uh, Neo Neur. I can put it on the screen for you guys to see it um no, let's see here so i'll put it on the screen i think i've talked about it before um it's it's a bit cheaper than the typical chairs that you have but this is this is the chair i have um this is the chair i have um uh, you know it's really good for back pain it's called new chair it actually has uh, also a grill so which means it's really good for breathing as well uh you know and it has a really good um Really good uh, quality uh, construction. Um, it also can recline quite a lot. It has lumbar support as well. So that's the chair I bought. You know, um, It's up to you guys if you like it as well. It's not very expensive. It's like 500 pounds or something like that. So let's see here. Um, Alistair Johnson Howe. Alistair Johnson is asking, uh, does, RG, does sRGB and Rexham... Uh, no, sorry. Alistair Johnson asks, how does sRGB and Rexham design differ from each other? They do, yes. It's sRGB and Rexon 09 do not match completely. Rexon 09 has a slightly, slightly different gamma. It's slightly darker as well. So they're not exactly the same. If you put an image, Rexon 09, next to an image of sRGB, especially if you're inside a nuke, we didn't open Nuke today. I was supposed to open Nuke and, and to show you. I had a, most of, I had a lot of footage to show you and everything, but I, I, I ran out of time, to be honest. I'll, I'll do more streams. Don't worry. I'll do more. Once I finish my course, I'll do more streams. Uh, but yeah, they are different. You should compare them. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
So, uh, José Ramírez asks, can you trust the Retina screen, iPhone or a Mac? Uh, I can trust the Retina display. You can calibrate a Retina display as well. It's also, it's very glossy though, but I can trust the Retina display. You should understand that iPhones actually have a specific color space. They have a D3, a P3 color space, which is similar to DCI P3, but it's not P3. It's another color space. So if you're actually delivering um, iPhone material, you probably want to consider looking into the color space that they use, you know. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, people here, uh, uh, Tan Moy Roy is asking about ACES. I do have one video about ACES. Um, I'll do more, you know, but I do have a video on YouTube about ACES. You can maybe have a look at that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, um, Jonathan Ramirez is asking, Aces, is it needed for VFX? Yes, it is. Aces is the most, it's basically a revolution of how you can control color management inside a company or inside a production. So I would really recommend it, you know. Some people here, Camilo Gutierrez is asking about the LG uh, CX9. I don't know, I've never tried it. You know, maybe it is. Maybe you can read some reviews uh, about that. Um, so... Uh, Alistair Johnson is asking, how do you export renders in different different color spaces from Nuke? Yeah, it is easy. You can always set the color space by baking the color space if you need to. So, for example, if you want to bake uh, Rexon 09 or if you want to bake sRGB or HDR, or you can either use Aces to bake it or you can use um, the regular color space management to bake it. You just have to either apply a color space node at the end, or you have to uh, apply the specific color space you want on the right node uh, at the end, at the right node. I'm not talking about the right node, I'm talking about the writing node at the end. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a lot of people here asking for, for monitors. There's a lot of other uh, websites that are good for that to tell you who it is. Uh, Mikael is asking, how do you work with clients that review work on crappy, non-calibrated monitors like colors are all wrong? It's not easy. Uh, yes, so when you're dealing with clients, you have to try your best to explain to them that they need to set the monitor at least at a specific color space that we are delivering. So at least if they can at least try to have sRGB, at least, or if they can try to have Rexon 9 You have to have this frank discussion with your client, trying to explain to them that they have to also understand that the delivery format should be done in a specific way. Because you saw, for example, the boards from Netflix, they have a specific delivery, so you can't really deviate. You can't change the delivery color space just because the client wants it. The client has to understand those are the specs. Normally, if you, have, if you have difficulties, you can always send the client the specs from Netflix or Amazon to explain to them a bit. But it's all about explanation. You need to communicate this. You need to talk to them. You need to try to educate your clients. That's the only way, you know. Um, so, Mikael is asking, are your hardware scope displays calibrated? No, they're not. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I don't calibrate that because that's just scopes. You don't need to really calibrate it. Uh, let's see here. There's so many questions, guys. I'm just going to skip a couple, but maybe I'll go through them again. Uh, let's see here. Uh Alistair Johnson asks, do you have a preferred temperature bulb to use when lighting your workspace? Yeah, so my, my bulbs, as you saw in my presentation, I can control the Kelvin control. The bulbs go all the way from 3,000 to 7,000, so that's the maximum I can do. I tend to have them at 6,500 so that it matches what I'm doing on my screen most of the time. If I'm just reading or just on the web or just like watching YouTube, then of course I don't use 6,500 because it's too blue. I prefer to have more like 5,000 Kelvin maybe. That's usually the environment I use if I just want to like be watching the web, you know. Uh, which is typical to paper, which is a D50, which is a 5,000 Kelvin. So that would be the thing. Uh, let's see here. More questions. Uh, so Mariano says, Hugo, in practice, changing a file from 2.2 to 2.4 and to 2.6 actually makes it flatter, not darker, as you're saying. What's up with that? Same goes for changing Nuke Viewer sRGB and darker than 7s, not flatter. Well, I'm not talking about the LUTs on Nuke. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ICC profile and the profile on your monitor. 
if if you actually have uh, the image in 2.4 it will be darker if you have the monitor set to 2.0 2.6 it will be darker the monitor if you put it to 2.2 then it will be brighter you're confusing the delivery so it's a different conversation here that you're having okay it's not the same thing basically when you set your monitor you're you're setting your monitor to the environment where you're working for and where you are. So it's not really the same. When you're in the Nuke viewer, obviously if you put uh, sRGB in Rex 09, that's gonna be a different thing. When you change the viewer LUT on the top, that you need to understand that the viewer LUT on the top needs to match the calibration on your monitor. So for example, if you're viewing your footage, you know, if you have a monitor calibrated to sRGB, then your viewing LUT on Nuke should be sRGB because then it matches the monitor. Now, if you are uh, delivering Rexon 09 and your monitor is calibrated to Rexon 09, then you should put your viewer LUT to Rexon 09 so that it matches the delivery that you're trying to do. But this is all a bit vague because it never really matches. That's why it's important for you to have a video signal like a Decklink camera, a Decklink uh, card to output the video signal. Um, let's see here, more questions here. Um, some people are asking about the compositing course, the 3.0. Uh, it's not possible to sign up yet. Uh, as I said, I am trying to uh, I am trying to finish the course as fast as I can. I will not be selling the course just yet while I'm actually finishing the course. Um, uh, Jose Leon Ramirez is asking, is it possible to calibrate your cell phone? I'm not really sure. I think they have calibration softwares. I think so. Um, I feel they have. I think so. Um, I don't know. I need to go and check that, I guess. Um, uh, Dinkwell Winkle is asking, is there a free alternative to Kalman? Uh, not that I know of, no. Kalman is the industry standard, so I use Kalman for all these things. Uh, let's see here. Um... Uh, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. More questions. Some see people here called VFX asking if I can work in 5,800 Kelvin on compositing. I mean, you could, but you need to be understand that usually deliveries are 600, 6,500. So just be careful with that. If you're not doing color critical work, then it's fine. You know, uh, you know, it's it's not fine. Um, um, someone here is asking on the chat. What color space is YouTube? I believe YouTube is sRGB. But there's no clear clear specifications about it. At least I can't really find much about that. Um, let's see here. So many questions. Oh, my God. Uh, Cold VFX is saying here, for example, room is, uh, if I have a room with 4,100 Kelvin bulb, and if I do calibration to 6,500, it's really a pain to work with. So I did 5,800. Yeah, I guess it would work as well. Uh, people are asking about my keyboard. Uh, Sean Banker is asking that. My keyboard is an editor's keys. That's a keyboard that it, the one I have is for Final Cut, but they have it for DaVinci as well. I think I'm going to skip the questions. There's so much, man. There's so much questions here. Damn. You guys went all over this. I'm gonna review some of the questions. I might do, I might do some topics about this, some of these questions. Um, yeah, so I think I think we're gonna wrap up. It's been two hours. It's more than enough time now. So uh, thank you so much for sending all the questions, and thank you so much for being here celebrating the 50th anniversary of Hugo's desk. Now keep in mind that. Until I finish my online course for my students, I will not do the uh, uh, Twitch streams or YouTube streams. I really enjoyed the YouTube stream, so I will be back on YouTube, most likely next month. Um, so once I finish my course, I will be back on a regular schedule. Now, you guys have to tell me if you liked it on YouTube. Did you prefer it on YouTube? Did you thought it was fine on YouTube? Maybe I can do both. Maybe I can do Twitch on YouTube and just um, keep... Um, keep um, alternating but uh, but yeah thank you so much for for everything here and thank you so much for the support um yeah the winner your someone is asking here who the winner was I mean, i'll put it on the screen again so on the chat that's the winner uh Kalemb is the winner from india uh so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the conversation uh, the video is not going to be right away online i need to edit out a bit 
and then I'll put the video back online, okay? So um, it will be probably ready for tomorrow or the day after. Um, and of course, uh, also, Kalem, don't worry, I'll email you about the monitor and how we're going to get the monitor to you. Uh, so thank you so much for everything. I'll see you in a month. So in about a month, I should be ready with the course, and then I can continue my streams. Until then... Don't forget to study. Don't forget to read some books. Don't get. Don't forget books are not uh, door stoppers. And thank you so much for everything. You guys are why I'm doing, I'm doing these streams and these videos. Thank you so much for all your help. So goodbye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. And uh, I'm gonna stay here with my cake while I finish my cake. So thank you so much for everything. Mmm, carrot cake is really good. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Okay. I am going.